Hi everybody, Rick McAvoy here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Rick McAvoy Photography. What am I talking about this week on my photography blog? 13 essential camera settings for architectural photography. In the blog post I go through each of these in quite a bit of detail. I thought I'd just give you the highlights here and let you know how I take my architectural and my construction photography photos come to that. Okay, so I'm using a Canon 6D most of the time. Um, I also have an Olympus EM5 Mark II, but the Canon 6D is the go-to camera for my architectural photography work. I match that with the Canon 17-40mm f4L lens, which is mounted on a Manfrotto 190GO or 055 tripod with an X-Pro geared head. That's the gear. There is no more, nothing else. That is what I use for 95% of my architectural photography work. Okay, so what are the camera settings? Now I say camera settings, I go a bit beyond that into um, things that I do, the, my setup with my gear and everything, but let's start off with what truly can be called camera settings. The aperture, f8 or f16. Why these? Well, because I'm using a 17 to 40 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, and I'm tending to use the 17mm lens for probably 90-95% of the photos. I don't need to worry too much about depth of field. So f8 is the sweet spot, it's the sharp bit of the lens. If I've got something in the near, for, near ground, in the foreground, that I, and I want to get more depth of field, I will go to f16. If, there's a, if the sun's in the shot and I want to get the burst of sun rays, then I'll go to f22, but that's the only time I'll do that. Aperture nice and easy. Shutter speed. Shutter speed. What well, one I say ISO? ISO is 100. The lowest native ISO on the Canon 6D. The lower the ISO, the higher the quality. That's a general rule of thumb. Stick with that, you can't go wrong. Shutter speed. Connect <laughs> connected by the camera. Or, as I would say in English, collected by the camera. Um... I've just seen a rather major omission in my um, my list um, is the actual shooting mode I use on my Canon 6D which is AV mode. Camera selects the aperture, the camera, I select the aperture, the camera selects the shutter speed based on the combination of aperture and ISO selected. So my camera's on a tripod, I'm photographing buildings, they don't move so um, yeah I don't really need to worry about shutter speed unless it's clouds or trees or a river or on those rare occasions when I have somebody in a photo. Okay, the AV one I need to correct on the blog post. Um, bear with. Camera mounted on a tripod. Whenever possible, I take photos from a camera on a tripod. Makes my composition better. Makes me take better photos. Don't need to worry about the shutter speed. Don't know why I'm tapping the desk when I say this because I don't normally do that. Camera level. Vertical's vertical, as in level, so the horizontals of the building horizontal, and set, so the verticals are vertical. If I can do that in camera, great. If not, sometimes I have to compromise a bit. I get the verticals as close as possible. Sometimes I just have to come back a bit to give me room to work on it in Lightroom. Um, Lightroom ideally, not Photoshop. Okay, back to the settings-y bit. Um, I've had a number of remote releases over the years, it's another bit of kit that I don't need. These days I use the self timer on the camera, it's on 10 seconds, I press the shutter release, 10 seconds later it takes the photo, the camera's not moving, it's nice and steady. Dead simple, one less bit of kit to pack, look after, buy batteries for, lose, buy another one of, don't like buying gear anymore, happy with what I've got. Next point, back button focus on. I don't focus using the shutter release button, I focus using a button on the back called AF on. Why do I do that? So I can separate focus from taking the photo because there could be some time delay and I just like doing it. AF to one shot. That's not a lot more I can say about that. We focus in one position and the focus stays there. Auto exposure bracketing is on. It takes three photos. The first one's the correct exposure, the second one two stops, two stops under, and the third two stops overexposed. So I've got a correct image, 
one with more of the highlights, one with more of the shadows. When I'm back at home in my office, I chuck them all together in Lightroom and I have one HDR image. Not only horrible grungy type things, but an actual proper technically correct HDR image with more info than I can get from one photo. It means I don't need to worry as much about the exposure either, I can just concentrate on taking photos. Drive mode is continuous shooting. Well, I need to because I'm taking three photos. So I'm focusing once, but I'm on continuous shooting, so it takes three photos one after the other. Image recording quality, raw. I always shoot in raw, never in anything else. Why would I? The only time I use JPEGs is when I'm converting an edited file to issue to a client or for sharing on our wonderful uh, social media. Auto white balance, on. Yeah, the purest will be... Um, getting the pitchforks ready to tell me that I'm a peasant and um, I should be getting my white balance right in camera. Yeah, I should, I know that, but this works for me and I can correct it afterwards in Lightroom. I take a grey card with me and I always get a neutral grey in there and this has worked 95 times out of 100. Um, sure, I've had a couple of problems where I've had to do it manually and it's just taken me more time, but it works for me and it speeds up my work. Because if I'm working on a live construction site, I haven't got time to fiddle around changing the white balance and everything else. Metering, evaluative. There's other metering modes on the Canon 60. This one does for, I'll say it again, 95% of the stuff that I do. So um, that's it. Those are the 13 settings for architectural photography that I use day in, day out. I'll be honest with you, I use them for landscape photography too, for construction photography industrial photography this is what I do what it means is like I say I'll say it again because this is the important bit I'm not worrying about the camera settings changing this that and the other when I'm on location my only two decisions are well do I change the aperture from f8 it's decision one and um, most of the time it's not the decision I have to make it's just every now and then a change of circumstance I have to change it so aperture sorted ISO sorted, shutter speed selected by the camera. Where I focus once I got the composition is the thing that I have to concentrate on and that's it. Everything else is all done. This is how I get consistently, I was going to say consistently excellent photos, that sounds a little bit smug doesn't it? So um, okay, I'm going to stop there. Anything else I want to say? Check out my blog, ringmacavoyphotography.com check out, wait for it, my brand new website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com. Yep, I have a photography podcast, Photography Explained, and it now has a home on the internet. I'm now up to episode 35 or 36 at the time of recording this, um, doing two episodes a week. Check them out, let me know. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Drop me a line, give me a comment, get in touch. Good to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I've been Rick McAvoy. Bye for now.